I used to always think that what I did was create a kind of a poor man's paradise on the dance floor. It gives them an opportunity to completely escape the rigors of reality and just be one with themselves and hundreds of other people at the same time that could be told strangers. Frankie Knuckles' story is the story of house music itself. Born in the underground gay clubs of New York and Chicago, house is now an international sound and Frankie DJs all over the world. So I asked John Brown, Frankie's tour manager, how it all began. Do I recall when I met Frankie Knuckles? Um, it was about 23 or 24 years ago, and I was working for Cool and the Gang. He was a disc jockey in New York City, and he was coming to pick up records. And we just hit it off. Right? We had a, a similar sensibility about music and, and a similar sensibility about human beings. We both enjoyed really deep soul music. We both really had a, a, a taste for it, you know, and, and it was great. It was a great time. It was the early 70s, and we really, all kinds of music was being played. To really make the whole room just move in one complete rhythm and all those people come together and just be one big force of energy, you have to be a part of that. You have to put yourself in the middle of that. And a lot of times I used to think it would be great if the DJ booth was like right in the center of the dance floor and then everybody was around you, but the booth would take up too much room in the center of the dance floor and therefore you wouldn't have a heart. I mean, the heart of the party is right in the center of the dance floor. A hot dance floor in Ibiza and the crowd locks into Frankie's sound. He developed this distinctive style at the end of the 70s at a Chicago club which has since passed into legend. The warehouse. I'd already been playing in New York for five years, and um, when the club closed, it was kind of depressing to me because it was one place I had, it's the only place I had ever really played, and I had only really known. And um, so when I got the warehouse, it was an opportunity for me to build something from the ground up on my own. And more than anything, I wanted to make it a world inside of itself, and I wanted to make it the kind of place where people will come there and really rejoice and be happy about who they are. We took Frankie back to Chicago, to the roots of house music. A trip like this would be incomplete without a visit to the original site of the warehouse. No longer a heaving club, it's now the office of a firm of lawyers. So Frankie, 206 South Jefferson, site of the original warehouse. It's been, uh, been a while, eh? It's been quite some time, actually. I bet you never thought you'd be coming back in this building. I've passed it many times, and you know, Frederick and I will drive past here when I'm usually visiting. We'll stop and blow kisses to it, you know, say prayers, you know, because it's like Mecca. But no, I never dreamed that I would actually be walking back up in this building again. So, how long has it been? How long has it been? 15, maybe 16 years. We closed the warehouse in 83. 1983. 1983. Okay, let's go in. Okay. <laughs> I'm not prepared. Look at this place. Because right here was my record closet. Well, this, it was bigger than this, actually. I mean, they've walled it in somewhat, but this is where I used to keep all my records at underneath the stairs here. They've completely replaced these windows because what we had up here were glass block windows. Uh -huh. And at the top, we had vents up there. And we can control the vents back on the loading dock. And so in the wintertime, when it, Chicago's known for its winters, where it can get really cold, uh, as opposed to having fog machines in, I'd hit the switch in the back and the vents would open up and we'd have instant 
Yeah, Nats Nats and dry yeah, Nats, yeah, yeah. dry as fuck, and it was perfect. <laughs> so you guys have heard of house music, right? Of course. Sure. But you didn't know, but it started right here in your offices. No idea. No. It didn't start right in this office, did it? <laughs> in this building. Well, underneath, underneath. Yeah. Why they've got a meeting room downstairs? That was the dance floor. And did they have a liquor license or no? No, juice bar. It was a juice uh, bar. What time juice would it open up? At midnight. Yeah. Presume the next day. Sometimes midnight the next night, depending on how well I felt. <laughs> uh, yeah. Did you? Were you the DJ or did you own it or? I was DJ. He lived here for a bit. He lived yeah, I lived in here for a while. I lived, actually, I lived up in this office for like about uh, six months. Who did you rent the building from? The foster company. Oh, really? Water Saver? Water Saver. It was a good building. Did the police ever get in any trouble? No. Actually, we never had a problem with the police. Um, we had a problem with the church once around the corner. It was one Easter oh, Sunday. Church, yeah. Oh, Sunday know, morning. One, one Easter Sunday. <laughs> okay. You know, I mean, we had like a bazillion people up in here, you know, and they yeah. were screaming having church up in here, and they were trying to have church around the corner, and all well, the religions were clashing, so let's sure. put sure. it sure. like that, so it didn't yeah. quite work. Pretty amazing. You want to see some pictures? Sure. sure. Yeah. This is a freak here. I don't know <laughs> if I have any pictures, shots of up here, but downstairs, oh, well, this is the front of the building. Those are the two gentlemen that I did the, uh, that I was doing the warehouse with, and that's in the front of the building. In my style, though. <laughs> that was like yeah, 19... Yeah, yeah, you can really <laughs> see like the outfit. That's probably like 1979, 1980. Oh, yeah. Here's a shot from outside, looking towards Presidential Towers. You notice they're gone. Oh, that's yeah. the building right there. Yeah. That's a shot of the dance floor with people on it. But this is one from the loading dock area where I had to be here with that. But here's a great shot. That's what the room looked like downstairs. You guys pack like that every night? Every Saturday. Every Saturday night? We do anywhere between 800 and 1,400 people. So house coming music, and going. House music that. started here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, really? That's, it was named <laughs> after the warehouse. Yeah. Oh, okay. They got its name from the warehouse, which was this building. Now, which yeah. door are they walking in here? This, this, this one here. This one. Yeah, okay. The one. At the bottom of the stairs. They told us it's a plumbing company. <laughs> 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 yeah, they didn't they mention you on the sales brochure. <laughs>